Hoi hoi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how I painted a bee. Um, it's yeah, that's that's really it. It's just pretty straightforward. I took a photo of a bee on a flower and I decided that I wanted to paint it. This isn't what I usually do, but I was really, I don't know, captivated or just excited about the concept of the photo that I took. That I took, I took a challenge and I'm really glad that I did. So to begin, I do my usual taping the watercolour paper down, that is 300 GSM, so obviously the thicker the paper, the less likely it is to warp. Obviously if you put a lot of water on it, it still potentially can, but yeah, you just try and, you know, not saturate, try not to drench your paper when you are painting. I was using watercolour pencils first to map everything out, again, like what I usually do, and this allows the line work underneath to disappear once I've added water to it because the watercolour pencils I use are just like some cheap back to school uh, watercolours so they don't have much pigment. To anyone that watches my content regularly, I know that I don't upload regularly but I have been live streaming a lot so thank you again for popping in if you have been. Uh, I do repeat myself a lot, it's because I just do a particular technique so again I've been using the same paper for a while now and I use the same watercolour pencil technique because I just think it's really handy. So I am sorry if I'm constantly repeating myself, but it's just kind of, you know, you never know who watches, there might be some new people, and hopefully I can potentially encourage um, new creators to appear. So I don't know, I guess I'm just get used to me repeating myself because, because I would love people to get more creative. I'm using watercolour palettes my usual go-to, except for this one was actually uh, a new palette that I purchased, which was Windsor & Newton, and it had a lot of colour options. I didn't actually realise that some of them were doubling up with the same colour, but the colours that do double up are ones that are quite useful, so like ones that are used for skin tones, or mixes like white, you know, so just, just colours that kind of, you know, potentially help the pigment of other colours and so forth. I like to think I make sense sometimes, I am sorry if I don't, just comment down below if you have any questions anyways. I always begin with either a background or, you know, just back imagery. So if I don't do like a solid background is basically what I'm, I mean by this. So with this one I did uh, just like a faint like floral background to kind of show that it's not on a white piece of paper but also to make sure that I don't pull away from the the overall flower and bee because I wasn't too sure if it was going to be quite flat looking because most of the time when I have painted you know uh, I keep saying you know I need to stop that but um, I keep painting landscapes or anything floral I find that it gets quite flat looking and it gets really busy looking and it's quite hard to read so this time I really tried a different approach and I tried to keep it quite open and I was quite close to the topic rather than zoomed out like I usually am. The great thing about watercolour is that if you do let it set that is it allows you to layer constantly and the colours do kind of seep through so you can really build some wonderful contrasts. I don't know if I, I guess, I, I don't know if contrast is the right word, but building up, is, it's a really rewarding feature that watercolour gives you. So don't ever go overly pigmented. Um, and also it, it is a bit of, it's a bit more time consuming, but it I feel like it's worth it. I feel like you can really unlock some cool techniques and some cool styles by being patient and by not over pigmenting your your watercolour paints. I'm not really sure how to go about describing how I'm painting in this part because um, it's just kind of like it's pretty straightforward I just kind of you know map something out and then I layer. Um, I guess I could mention the fact that I picked particular base tones in different areas of it to try and show the separation so for the top I kind of picked more of a blue and then the bottom I kept it a bit more warm to show a bit more contrast. And then once I was happy with the colours I started adding some white tones to kind of, um, you know, push push out um, the primary colours that I wanted to show and um, really highlight the features um, and potentially create some dimension. I'm pretty sure half the words that I say, maybe more than half, 
I'm using them incorrectly. So, so yeah, I'm sorry. I hope that just you being able to see what I'm doing, you can kind of understand what I'm trying to say. And I am trying to get better at just being able to voice over and be a bit more confident sounding. So thank you for tolerating me when I don't make much sense. Once I do get a bit more confident and a bit better at my terminology, I would love to do some slower versions of my paintings to just kind of talk you guys through particular steps when it comes to colouring. I am currently making tutorials for learning how to do basic shapes, but I think a lot of people are curious about how I, I colour things, and the reason that I haven't is because it, it, it's just harder to, uh, I guess, describe to people how I do things. So that, that is a future goal though, and if you are interested, again, let me know, let me know down below if you're actually interested in learning how I colour, because um, I do lots of different things, I do like alcohol based markers and watercolour and and they all have kind of different techniques, so I would love to go through them, but uh, I just don't want to say anything that makes it more confusing for everyone. Well, anyways, I was really happy with this painting and I feel like if you see me on any of my platforms you would know that I was talking proudly about my bee. It's something that I just- I haven't created something like this before and I was just super excited and I think you can actually see that it's a flower with a bee in it, so that's pretty dope. So again, huge thank you to everyone that's watching and to all my Patreon supporters. I, I don't know why you keep doing it, but it's awesome and uh, thank you. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you next video.